Greetings from Sacred Spaces. It's Merit Malouf Plum. And my name is Jennifer Dixon with Thrive Yoga and Wellness. We are happy to be with you today and we are going to explore a common word in your yoga classes, which is namaste. Namaste. So I don't know if you are a bit like me. The first couple of times I took a yoga class, Merit, I was like, Nama, what? <laughs> and so what did, what were your first emotions or first takes on just the simple phrase of Namaste? Well, it's interesting because it was one of the first medicine women that I worked with used Namaste. And really? this lady had been on a very interesting journey. She had been a Catholic nun and wow. then kind of had an awakening through a Buddhist Kuan Yin experience she had and left, left the church and followed kind of Buddhism or a form of Buddhism that's very connected to Kuan Yin and had done that for 20 years when I met her and she was Native American heritage. So she had that going on too. And she was very interesting, very uh, integrative with a lot of different beliefs. And she introduced it to me as, you know, recognition of the divine spark within each person and honoring that that divine within the per, within the person rather than a religion that it's more, it was more universal yeah so the i was taught to use it with deep deep reverence and really only ever used it when i was studying with a teacher i would say it to the teacher yeah. really so that was my very early origins. And then when, you know, yoga kind of exploded about 20 years ago and it was customary to say it at the end of a class, which given my background with it through her was, was very reverent in the class for me and because I honored the teacher as a teacher, but really the the eastern yogis don't use it like that it's more of a greeting and if you break the sanskrit word down it's namas which means to bow um te means you literally that was what i read i bow to you yeah <clears throat> i had a a no, we're near similar, nothing similar. I just was in a yoga class and they said it and I had no idea what it meant. And that sent me down this rabbit trail of research. And, you know, you see the light in me, sees, recognizes, honors the light in you, the spark. And then you have that literal transition. I bow to you. And At I, I can't center. Yep. With your yeah, hands the here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The nam that's, that's why this is the Namaskara Mudra. Um, or your hands at Namaskar here in your heart. Mm -hmm. And, and so I recognize the, I'm not avoiding eye contact. I'm thinking, I recognize the sacred nature of that, you know, like recognizing the divinity in all of us, but right. I've always just, um, seen the, I've always been drawn to, you know, plays on words and humor parts of it too, which is why, you know, at the studio we have like namaste in bed and things like that which is interesting to me because i can see that sacred nature but then i also like to do the plays on words and so um i know that that can be rather scandalous in the yoga world what what do you think about that sort of take well i thought about that a lot today when i was kind of reading some articles and some other perspectives on on the word and i have to say you know sedona had a shirt one time that said namaste in bed and I've heard people say, namaste, be bleep, you know? Yep. And it always kind of hits me like in my core. 
because of, I think, my, my roots in it. But even those were, you know, more a different Eastern philosophy than yoga. Interesting. Cause so it, we, in the West, I think we use it more uni- as a universal sign yeah. Yeah. of respect. And, you know, I read one article about a guy whose parents taught them to do namaste to their elders. So it was common in that village, but in other places, and I will say, I don't know many Indian people who actually greet you that way. And when you say it, you know, of course, most people, especially in the South, are like, namaste, you know, and because I'm Southern. You can see, you can <laughs> see their, their faces, they kind of almost smirk at you, like, you know, because they use it in a whole different way and you know in in the hindi roots of yoga you know it it would depend on whatever god they were worshiping if it was you know rama it would be nama nama rama some other kind of quote with the nama part so you know it depends kind of on what the belief systems are and in the west it has just become a sign of reverence, a sign of respect, honoring that divine spark within each human being. I do it to trees too, because I recognize the divine spark in those. Interesting. I also think in the West here, we are much more, what is the word I'm, I don't want to say flippant, but we're much more, we just take things lighter. I mean, you can see the shirts with Jesus, peace and people out, you know what I mean? And, and I think in, in general, in the West, we are, we just aren't that serious about so many things and we can make jokes about it. And you can see that there's just like there's seriousness behind Jesus, there's seriousness behind namaste, but I still, I, I, I still will, I don't always, but I'll end a class with namaste and sometimes I'll say, I, yeah. And, and I'll say, you know, like, the light in me honors and recognizes right. the light in you and whatever that means to you, you know, I'll, I'll, cause you have to, some people still are, you know, maybe they're looking over their shoulders and being testy about it. But I think it's a beautiful opportunity, especially in light of all of the hatred and just, mean spiritedness in the world today to take that moment, even if it's silly and I'm going to stay in bed, but recognize the humanity in each of us, regardless of, of skin color, creed, whatever. And the, with spring going on and, and, you know, we're still dealing with this COVID crisis and the world starting to open up and, all of this pent up angst. I think that the choice of this namaste for today is so beautiful because hopefully it becomes something that we take in a serious way. Like we recognize that there is this light in, in you and in me and in our brothers and sisters of whatever faith and whatever skin color. And we honor that and you know, we just wish nothing but the best for humanity in general in light of this pandemic. And I think that that's one of these more beautiful things about such a deep word that we can take very lightly in the namaste in bed or namaste or whatever, but the the deeper root of it. I'm sorry. When I started working more intuitively with it, I started using it almost as a mantra when I would be with someone who was very hostile or not in alignment with that divinity, that humanity. And I it would I would almost just chant it silently to myself as a mantra so that I could keep at least honoring that person's divinity from a place of love rather than me getting hostile. And I found it a a very powerful practice 
It's interesting that you said that as you were practicing, because that's something that my teacher Manju talks about a lot as teachers when you're in a Mysore class. So Mysore for Ashtanga is where everybody's practicing on their own and the teacher is watching and providing assistance. Um, when he's doing that, he's chanting. He's, he, he knows like mm -hmm. all these beautiful chants and my mm -hmm. Sanskrit's terrible. Um, the only thing I can equate it to, it's walking around praying, right? And right. he says, the, the reason why you do that is one, it protects you. Two, even if the other person doesn't know what you're saying or doesn't believe it, it still helps them too, because there's energy there. And I think that that's beautiful that you intuitively were providing that mantra, that chant mm -hmm. to protect yourself and then sending that same person love. And that's, that's right, kind because, of the way that I was taught about chanting. Yes. And because early on in my experience, with it it was more of a reverence to a teacher but as i you know integrated it into my being it became more even if it's someone who is hostile or who has betrayed you that's still a teaching there are master teachers and we want to honor that even if we don't honor the behavior or you know because we don't make ourselves a victim to that, but we do honor that, you know, that person has the same di divine spark. Yep. And, so. and the, the idea is how can we take that knowledge that you and I have and, and share it, right? So where more people are recognizing the divinity and that divine spark or the light to the humanity for lack of any other word if you don't want to take it into the religious world in each of us and imagine the world that was full of people that, that recognized it and that to me is is just one of those like statements that's easy to to say but then if you take a second it'll just make you kind of sit back because of all of the the crap that is going on all of the the stuff that is hate that is going on and right and how heavy that is Oh, the other point I wanted to make what is that, you know, for me, when I do that, it is kind of like a hug, an energetic hug for me and the person. And you can do it from six feet away. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're all missing that touch and that hug. But I was thinking today about just how reverent it is for me when I do that, even at the end of our show, I, I'm, I'm in the deepest place of, of that beingness when I do it. And it brings me into a very warm and yummy place. So, and we can, it's so easy to do, you know? So a good assignment would be to start sending people namastes as their hugs, the virtual hugs, right? In today's society. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I love that idea. I love that I do idea. Too. I do too. So, so at I the root, it's it very means... universal, but for me, Sanskrit is a universal. And I know not everyone in the West believes that I read an article where a school in Georgia banned, they brought yoga in to the school. And some of the parents believed that namaste was a, very anti-Christian word, so they banned it from the school. But for me, it's it's honoring whatever that your divinity, re whatever reaches your di divinity is fine. I just honor the divinity, the right to choose, the right to be, you know. Yeah, that that's a tough one and it's a slippery slope when, because I grew up here in the South and I, and I grew up very, I, I still am very, very religious and um, I grew up more fundamental. And when I hear that, I don't know if you noticed my shoulders kind of went up. I was like, it was all I could do. Hopefully the camera won't catch that. It bothers me because we get that. And I get that even as a yoga studio. Oh, I can't practice yoga because I'm Christian. Um, 
you know, in, in the Bible, it even talks about how <laughs> not, uh, Peter was, had the dream and was told to eat all the things that a good Jew would never eat. And they're, they're not unclean because I made it, you know what I mean? And, um, and, it, and it, it's a struggle for me personally when I come across those things because it's, yeah, sure, not all things, nothing is, is bad for us and that's in the word but not everything is edi- not everything edifies us you know builds us up right and so i i see how someone i guess in theory could be taken aback by it or drawn away but i i don't know how saying i recognize the light in you and i honor it could ever be construed as anything bad so that's where well I and the other the it. other part of it that i learned was you know, the, the, the light in me recognizes the light in you. And when you are in that place in you and I'm in that place in me, we are one. So we're bowing to the oneness too. I, I think that's beautiful. And I think that if more people recognized how we all are one, then those senseless, you know, the guy down in Georgia that got killed while he was running or, you know, the bombings in the Middle East because you don't have the same faith. I I think if we all recognize that we were one human race, then it, it could be world changing. And that's why I love the world, the word namaste for that reason. And that's some, that's deep and heavy stuff. And, and that's, it is, it's very sacred. And, you know, yoga has really expanded that knowledge of, of that energy. We have, we may perceive it a little differently in the West and I'm sure scholars could have long conversations about the root and, you know, how it took this meaning, how it took that meaning. But everyone I know that uses it comes from a very, genuine place when they use it and it shifts people i agree and there's the whole because you're right scholars could butcher it and and there there could be scientists could butcher it or you know these deep thinkers and they could get mad at us for being irreverent but if you're focusing on a word and if you believe that words have power and someone is using the word, even if they're not using it the way that they, they, you think they should use it, does that rob the word of its power? I agree. And so there still could be something working on a deep We are reverent when we're using it, but you know, all you can do is, be reverent in, within yourself and those who aren't, we can't carry that. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. And so when you are in your classes, just like this, do you end all of your classes with Namaste or some, or just depends? I do. I do. And a lot of I'm, teachers will begin and end. Mm-hmm with with it i i i have no problems with it sometimes well you also know me too i get so all right we're here to practice this right. is what we're gonna do so i i don't normally start because i am on this mission to move but usually by the end there's that that stillness that comes with the good practice that it's like slow down and recognize the humans that are there the, the the spirits that are there amongst you and it's a and it's a beautiful thing to recognize and i hope that if anything out of today's conversations with between us anybody that's listening recognizes that that's our goal right we want to recognize the light that's in each other when we say that yes and the humanness that's in each other and how we are all one would you agree would that be a decent summary? i totally agree with that and i think that's beautiful I think that's beautiful. It's really all about intention. When you go to the very depth of what it's about, it's about intention and the eternal presence and the unity 
that yoga is or Agreed. that whatever your practice is. Agreed. So are you going to be upset when you see a namaste in bed shirt? Because I have one. No, I don't. I don't get a. When I really think about it, I probably wouldn't buy one. But, you know, I, I don't wear shirts with crosses on them. I wear a hand to hand and it's very sacred to me. I wear it with intention, but I don't wear a lot of symbols like the cross or ohm. I have a symbol of ohm on, that goes on a pendant, but I don't wear it anymore because it's become so sacred and holy. I don't want it to be a fashion item. So if I'm really working with that energy, I'll wear it. But otherwise I don't, you know, I don't. So interesting. I have a slightly different take on it. I, I like to take it because if it'll get people talking about yoga, yes. then I hope that somebody will check us out at thriveyogaandwellness.com. So for right, me, and that's why I don't judge. It's a funnier, I don't judge those things because I do know that it increases that awareness. In, in and yes. it starts through a joke, but they delve deeper into it, then they'll be blessed by that. Yeah. So it's like Mon Monju says, you know, I don't care how they get to the mat. Just get them to the mat. Get <laughs> just get them there. Just get, and then the rest will fall in place. And it's true how that happens. It's, it, I know it's happening for me every day with all of, as my practice evolves with age and children and life. Um, it's, it's true. Like the deeper, the longer that you practice, the more it's changing and it doesn't, including practice, including yoga or including namaste doesn't exclude other things. It starts to change your pursuit of things, I think, but I always think it's for the health, the health and betterment. And even that searching for the, the deeper meaning behind namaste and recognizing that light, it's only going to be good stuff that would come from it and recognizing the, I had an interesting journey is. with the, with what you're talking about. I reread a book that I read in my twenties that really opened me up to earth medicine and it was the teachings of Don Juan by Carlos Castaneda's. I read it when I was like 23, you know, figuring out who I was, thought I knew it all. And I did all the exercises because he has you do all these like shamanic journey type things out in nature. And I did every one of them when I was 23. And something just made me pick the book up again and read it at 52. And it was so crazy how differently I took the meaning in the teachings just almost like I was a completely different person and I'm sure I am. So that was interesting, just kind of related to what you were saying about how we evolve with our practice and how it's, it's a beautiful journey indeed. And the, I go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to start wrapping up, but you finish your point. The, the interesting thing about the evolution is, even if it's something that you don't resonate with right now, right. but it's the, the seed that's planted and yes. it's in good earth, mm -hmm. imagine what can become of it. And so that's why I think those are fun. It's, it's, you look twice, you pay attention to it, and then maybe that's the seed. And even if it doesn't grow right away, hopefully it will grow and that yoga will come, whether it's on the mat with me um, meditation with you, you know, whomever it'll come. And our hope is, I, I, I hope that one of the biggest things after this conversation today is that we, one, recognize how cool yoga is because it is, but then two, we honor and we respect the humanity, the light, the divinity that is in each of us that's going down the street. Even the person that cut you off or tried to run you off the road that happened to me last week scary us all get out and I I was ruffled up you know but it's like that that person I'm safe I'm safe that person is obviously upset about something I'm safe no big deal you know I need to be more aware of my surroundings and 
we're and you we're come back to center off. Yeah, and you come back to center. And that's that's what it's all about. Beautiful. Now, what were you trying to say? I was trying to say thank you to all our listeners and viewers for being with us today. Yes, and we are you. honoring the divine spark, the light in each of you. Go in peace. Namaste. Namaste.